Hello, Tanya Laird here, and welcome to part two of lecture six of ENGR 231 Engineering Statics. In this portion of the lecture, we are going to be looking at some examples of calculating uh, couples for simple force systems. So in part one, we learned about what a couple is and uh, some definitions of it and some of their properties. And here we're going to be in this portion of the lecture, we're going to be looking at uh, how to calculate couples mathematically. So there's going to be a couple ways to do this. First, I'm going to just first I'm going to discuss the uh, 2D scalar approach, and next I'm going to discuss the uh, 3D vector approach. So uh, let's look at calculating couples, more of a 2D vector approach. Or a 2D scalar approach, I should say. Now you can use the scalar approach with 3D, but generally um, it's going to be such a pain in the butt to actually work through all the trigonometry that you're a lot better off nine times out of ten just working through the uh, cross products, like with a lot of moment type things. So let's first talk about the simple case, a 2D scalar approach. So I want, let's say I have a, oh, something like this. I'm going to define a couple forces. And I'll give the slopes of them something like this. Oh, let's say they're like this. Let's say we have a five pound force and a five pound force. And uh, these were separated by a certain distance. Oh, I don't know, let's say six inches. Six inches, something like that. Well, finding the magnitude of this couple is going to be very simple. Uh, magnitude of couple. Let's say I want to find the couple. Actually, let's say I want to find the couple's magnitude and its vector. Uh, so here, if we have the x, y, and the z-axis would be unshown coming out of the page. Well, again, if you already have the distance, the perpendicular distance between this, the moment is the magnitude of the couple is going to be uh, very simple. Actually, I should say the couple or the magnitude of the couple. Of the couple and its vector. The magnitude of it is going to be very simple. It's going to be nothing more than... Uh, the force, the magnitude of the force, times the distance. So that will be five pounds times, uh, that would be six inches. And that would then be, uh, let's say, uh, 30 pound inches or inch pounds, both equivalent. Now the vector, uh, because this would involve a cross product, I know that any moment that is defined by forces in the xy plane, the vector by the right hand rule would be coming out of the page. So in the z axis, we'll assume if it's a positive vector or a positive moment, this is a positive rotation because it's counterclockwise. And so that would be along the positive z axis. So the vector, the moment vector itself, I would say 30 inch pounds uh, k if I wanted to use the ijk notation. Or if I did want to use the whole, uh, if I wanted to use bracket notation, I could say 0, comma 0, comma 30 inch pounds. 30 inch pounds. So again, when you have it in 2D, it's really not too bad. Uh, I can show you a more difficult version of the 2D. Like let's say uh, uh, sometimes you're not given or it's not obvious exactly what the distance between them uh, is. And then you have to do a little bit of trigonometry, but usually it's not that bad. So let's see, for example, if you have a, let's say we're told that we have a few points. Let's say I have a force like this, like this here. Let's say this is, oh, oh, let's go with 15 newtons here. And we have an equal and opposite 15 newton force here. 15 newtons there. And uh, let's say for a moment that this distance is given as 
we're not basically we know where the forces are applied but we don't know the actual uh, perpendicular distance so this is let's say this was uh, oh, 20 inches and this is 5 inches and we know these things are at a uh, let's say we're told these are at a certain angle or at a 3 4 5 slope for this problem so let's say this is a, a 3 4 5 slope for both of these and so the hard part again because this is a simple little scalar type system basically the hard part is just running through the trig and I remember our trigonometry and figuring all that out so let's uh, let's go ahead and embarrass ourselves or we'll go ahead and embarrass myself by tripping over the trigonometry uh, the easiest way on this honestly is just to use, would be just to use a cross product but uh, let's do this without let's do this the hard way and work through the trigonometry so let's see let's work through this and I'm gonna draw out this little portion here because this is the distance D that I'm looking for I'm looking for this distance D and I know this here is a right angle and I know this is five inches and then I also know this thing is at a three four five slope so another way I could describe this is with a three four five slope is oh, that's not gonna stick okay that this slope is going to be Let's see, this is, uh, if I have my three, my four, and actually I want to record this as, uh, maybe in a different color, to indicate that these are ratios rather than actual dimensions. Then I'll record this as a three, four, five. And there's probably an easier way to do this trigonometry, but that's all right. Okay, so um, let's see. Now I'm just going to, this is one case where I might actually go ahead and use the angles because that's actually... A little bit easier for me to conceptualize on this particular problem and half of you are probably uh yelling at your screens right now saying why don't you figure out this obvious way of doing this oh well okay so if i want this theta that theta is going to be the inverse tangent of uh four over three that theta is the inverse tangent of four over three and that comes to uh, an angle that I'm embarrassed I'm having to get here, but the inverse tangent of four over three, and that would be 53.13 degrees. 53.13 degrees, and because this is a right angle here, if this is 53.13 degrees, then this one here, from here to here, that is 90 minus 53.13, and that's gonna be about, uh, it'll be about uh, 37. But let me just do that exactly, or reasonably exactly, 36.87. That's 36.87 degrees. And so then, if, uh, let's see, if I know this theta is this, uh, well then, again, from that theta, see, really, the, again, the hard part for this, for this particular type is just working through the, trig, uh, is just working through the trigonometry. This is 36.87, let me draw it a little bigger. And sometimes I trip over myself on the trig here. Again, when I have to do this, I usually just work through the cross product. It's simpler nine times out of ten. Uh, Thirty-six. Point, but I'm trying to do this without doing a cross product. And so I don't know this distance. This is just a ratio. So what do I? What I do know is that let's see that the hypotenuse on this is d, because again we're dealing with this triangle, the bottom one here, one that actually describes the distance between uh, these. Sorry, the hypotenuse. Yes, the hypotenuse is uh, D here. Wait, that's not right. Let's let me think about this. Got to get this all rotated in my head. Nope. Sorry, the hypotenuse is five inches. Yes, and and the leg, the opposite leg, is D. There we go. One of those things. And the adjacent leg. Uh, well, we don't know that yet. Okay. So then, uh, well, now this is just basic trig. We can say the sine of thirty-six. 0.87 degrees is equal to uh, d over 5, and then d is just equal to 5 times the sine of 36.87, but I'm sure if we were more if we were a little clever and a little less lazy with our ratios, we could have applied that directly, but I'm feeling lazy this morning, so uh, anyway, <laughs> so times the sine of 36.87, and what do you know, I get exactly 3 inches. 
So the distance between there is exactly three inches. It's almost like this was chosen with numbers that would work out uh, well. Uh, well, not really cleverly chosen, just a three, four, five triangle. So, and then the moment of the couple is just going to be uh, 15 newtons. Oh, that is a very interesting unit. Uh, I just noticed that. That is a very interesting unit system. <laughs> We're going to do a horrible bastardization of uh, metric and English here and make uh, every scientist cry. And so uh, 15 newtons times 3 inches is the most horrifying unit imaginable, which is 45 newton inches. Ugh, gross. 45 newton inches. The, uh, the magnitude of that moment, or the magnitude of the couple of produced by that magnitude of the moment produced by that couple is a horrifying unit of 45 newton inches. And in fact, uh, no, I'll just leave it as that because that's funny. Okay, and that is the basic idea. Again, uh, for simple scalar systems, all you have to do, or for simple 2D systems, all you really have to do is find the distance between them, which is either given, or you can just go and do some little basic trigonometry, and sometimes you have to pound your head against the wall to get the, tr uh, the trig right, uh, if things are at odd angles and such, but really it's not too bad. Now, let us look at the 3D approach, the vector approach. So, um, the vector approach, or the 3D vector approach. Couples, 3D vector approach. So, let us say for a moment that I want to calculate the couple um, produced by a f two forces separated by a certain distance. Now, we could do the perpendicular approach that we looked at uh, here, but really, that's really not worth the time. Instead, we can say the moment produced by a couple, the moment vector produced by a couple, it's actually very simple. Uh, by a couple. The moment vector produced by a couple is as follows. So the moment, not the scalar, not the magnitude or the scalar, but the moment vector is equal to r cross f. Hmm looks familiar and looks indistinguishable from the previous moments we've looked at, but uh, the previous derivations of moments we've looked at, but this R is very particular. F, that's not too bad. F is just the moment, or sorry, the force, force vector of either force that produces the couple. Uh, force vector of either force that produces the couple. Uh, then, and so basically, let's say you have F, you have your F here, and your F here, two different force vectors, and then some R connecting them. Uh, M is the moment, per, the moment uh, vector of the couple. And R is the displacement vector, and this is this is the key. It's very flexible, just like our uh, previous R's we've looked at. Uh, moment vector, displacement vector, from anywhere. From anywhere uh, uh, along one force to anywhere along the other force. Along one force's line of action, Uh, along one force's line of action, if I can manage to write the word forces properly. Uh, forces, line of action. To anywhere on the other force's line of action. Oh, on the other force's line of action. So I can take that R from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. It doesn't matter. I can take that R anywhere uh, from backwards negative infinity, from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity, positive infinity to anywhere from positive infinity to negative infinity. 
just anywhere along one force's line of action to anywhere along the other force's line of action. Either is fine. Now, one note. I do need to make sure I use the correct force vectors. So I can't, if I'm taking, if, uh, if I'm using an R that goes from this one, this force to this force, I need to make sure to use this force's force vector. If I use this vector, uh, basically uh, one going from here to here, and then if I use this force vector here, the one that, in this drawing, the one that's going up and to the left, if I use that with an R that goes from that one to this one, I'm not going to get the right result. I'm, I'm going to get the right magnitude, but basically I'm going to end up with a moment vector that is equal and opposite of the correct one. So you calculate it very similar to how you do normal moments, where you take a, uh, a force and a line going to that force. You don't use a line coming from that force, you use a line going to that force. So I have two choices. I can either use this force vector and an R that goes from somewhere along this line to somewhere along this line, or I can use this force vector and a, uh, a displacement vector from somewhere along this force to somewhere along this force. Either of those is fine. So either of those is acceptable and will produce identical results by the magic of cross products. Well, not math, not magic, I should say, more math magic, but it'll all work out if you do it right. Well, assuming if you do it right, which is, as we've seen in uh, some of these lectures, is uh, not a given. So <laughs> let's work through a basic example. So let's consider this uh, basic example. Now, setting one of these up can be tricky. So let's consider a 3D vector case. X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z here. And let's say I have uh, a couple points. Now I'm gonna make things a little bit, uh, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and um, I'm gonna give myself just a couple arbitrary forces, uh, force Fs, um, but I'm gonna cheat by having them pass through, um, both pass through the Y axis. So let's say this force vector, actually let me just say I have F and F. But actually, let me say I have f and negative f, since I'm doing this in vector form. And let's say f, um, let's say f by itself is, oh, let's just say that is, let's do this in metric, uh, let's give that as, oh, what does that look like? Let's say 2 meter, no, no, not 2 meters, uh, 2 newtons, maybe negative 1 newton comma uh, positive two newtons. So positive in the, actually let me give that positive three newtons, just make it not the scale. So I'm not using the same uh, units or same numbers. And so positive in the z and the x and slightly negative in the y. And the opposite of that, that negative f, would be uh, everything's the same but flipped in sign. Now let's also say that I have dimensions here. Let's give this as, oh, that's a really bad dimension symbol. Let's say this is two meters, not that it's gonna matter. And this is, uh, let's say, oh, I don't know, 0 0.5 meters. All right, you know what, why not? Yeah, that'll, that'll work. 0 0.5 meters. Now, we know that we could take the, uh, the moment vector from anywhere along one force's line of action to anywhere along the other force's line of action. However, there is a reason I laid this problem out um, the way I did. And the reason for that is that this, this vector here, the, the vector between these, is going to be very easy to get. Or we can often, just like we can with moments, uh, regular moments, when we take, uh, we can harness that property that says we can use any vector to choose one that is convenient to us. Now, sometimes that may be the perpendicular vector, but in this one, in this case, the perpendicular vector is definitely not the most convenient. I'm going to say that M, the moment, is R cross F, but I have an extremely convenient, almost chosen vector, it's almost like someone chose it, um, uh, that is going to be very easy to get and it's going to keep me from having to find the unit vectors and all this kind of stuff. And I can just say, hey, look, what if R is just the vector, just I, well, one half I or sorry, not I, J, one half J. I can just say this is zero meters, comma, uh, 0 0.5 meters, 
comma, zero meters. Zero meters, comma, 0 0.5 meters, comma, zero meters. And my R here would be going from here to here. That's my R, just like this. Now, but, uh, as we discussed just in the previous slide, I cannot now just use F unmodified. It's going this way. I need to use the F that's going this way. So my F in this case, the, the, the F for my vector, I need to flip my previous uh, F. So the F that's going to go into this will be uh, not 2, negative 1, 3, but negative 2. Negative 2 newtons, comma, positive 1 newton, comma, 3 newtons. And you know, I'll set this up so I can do an easy cross product. Uh, let's say three newtons here. Or, yeah, three newtons, or a negative three newtons, one of those things. And then an R cross F. Well, let's see here. I'll just set it up like I usually do with my I, J, and K. Like so. And then, of course, a lot of things are going to cancel out. J and K here. Let's see, so I cover up the I, I get nothing for this diagonal. If I cover up the I, I end up with just, uh, for the first diagonal, I get, uh, that's going to be negative 1.5. Negative 1.5 uh, Newton meters. And then the other diagonal uh, gives me nothing because it just cancels out. In the J, uh, both diagonals have zeros in them, so they cancel out. And the k, the first diagonal, uh, cancels out, but I get a minus negative one uh, newton meter. So the final vector, r cross f, will be negative 1.5 newton meters in the i, uh, plus one newton meters in the k. And that would be the moment produced by that. Again, all you have to do is take a uh, a displacement vector from anywhere along one force's line of action to anywhere along the other and making and we need to make sure that we're using an f such that or an f vector a force vector such that the uh, r goes from uh goes to that force vector that we're using rather than from it and really that's all there is to it uh now of course these problems can be a little tricky sometimes uh, especially if you have more complex systems, but I think that serves as a basic introduction to finding uh, moment vectors for couples. All right, that'll do it for part two of this lecture. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, in part three, we're going to be looking at finding equivalent force couple systems, which is a way of moving, uh, which is a way of moving uh, forces from one location to another while preserving the rotational tendencies. Okay, all right, that'll do it for now. I'll see you all for part three shortly. That'll I'll see. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and as always, thank you.